Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the BA Montana, the Blue Archive Montana, the badass Montana. <laughs> Whatever way you want to look at it, uh, that is what we're in. Now, I'm going to be straight with y'all. I'm using this as kind of a filler episode. I hope you guys enjoy. This is the other match that I was talking about when I talked about it in the first match that I showed you guys in the Meet the BA Montana. Okay? So this is the other match. But uh, basically, I, I played Farm Sim and streamed Farm Sim and I didn't record my video ahead of time. So I'm a little tired and I wanted to get something done without having to play Warships tonight. So I apologize to everybody out there if you're disappointed. But uh, I promise we still got a fun game for you guys. So it's going to be a fun one. Uh, it's going to showcase strengths, weaknesses of the BA Montana, and uh, also of my team. So <laughs> let's get into it. So right off the bat, we're on Shatter. Now I spawn on the right. I like to go to the right to try to save my team, right? Like win your side or at least hold your side at all costs. What you're going to notice is that uh, my team does not include that same strategy. In fact, we have two cruisers going in front of the islands at the beginning of the match when there are two destroyers in the match. This usually ends poorly. I do not ever recommend going in front of this island because it almost always ends in getting absolutely walloped. Now, the Napoli gets through pretty quickly. It's got good concealment, good speed. So, more power to you. But you'll notice that the second cruiser gets spotted and oh my god, hello Zhao. Did you notice what happened right there? I went to shoot the Zhao and then the stupid AA, the uh, game is like, oh, you want to shoot at this guy? And then I realized that I had AG loaded because this was the first game that I ever played in the BA Montana. I know. Sadness. All the sadness. That being said, it wasn't a bad salvo. We still ended up with 5,000 damage. No fires, of course, because when Battleship shoots a cruiser with a 30 or 40% chance to set fires, we don't get a fire. But when a cruiser shoots a Battleship with a 12% chance to set fire, they get a fire. It's just the way RNG and math works, right? Anyway... That being said, I definitely have AP loaded this time, and I've got a shot on the way for the Des Moines, who's just kind of sitting there, full broadside, begging for it, and, wait for it, bonk, <laughs> first shot with AP, a success, <laughs> and it was at this moment I knew, me and this Montana were going to be just fine, <laughs> shocker, who could have seen that coming, Spartan likes the Montana, just, this just in, water is wet, <laughs> And he's got an abundance of it on his ship right now. But uh, as we take a shot at the Yama, again, we're just trying to get shots close. And of course, RNG giveth, RNG taketh away. And I am now broadside. Could have been much worse. Could have been much worse. But uh, you can see our cruiser has done, did the thing that cruisers do, which is once... Once you screw up once, you double down and you keep screwing up until you're removed from the game and then you complain that battleships are incredibly broken and that wargaming is biased. It's the same thing that happens to battleships where they overextend and get themselves into trouble and they complain about destroyers getting geeted, you know, how busted destroyers are or how busted light cruisers are that are using island cover. But look at the team. You see what they're doing on the minimap? Now, my team has overextended on this side. They're in trouble. They're about to go down. Nothing I can do about that. They've got an abundance of ships, including a destroyer, a couple of cruisers, and a couple of battleships. This is not an ideal scenario to have a destroyer and a cruiser right next to them, right? Now, Napoli and I are a little bit smarter than that. We're like, okay, we're not going to charge straight into that, right? Napoli, don't do anything stupid. I'm giving you a compliment. Now, because of that... If you look on the minimap, everybody on the left flank has abandoned their flank to come to this side of the map. Don't ask me why, it's just a thing. Now right here, the Zal looks like he's about to change course, so we're going to go ahead and take the shot up over the island. We place it as beautifully as I can place it. We played that absolutely perfectly. Bonk. And we get like a very subpar result, I'm not going to lie. Now. It is unfortunate, but these things happen. You know, maybe he got sped up just enough to survive. But surely, surely, a blind shot over the top of the hill he can't possibly see coming will do better. 
not really. Same same result, basically. But uh, somebody has absolutely smashed that Yamato. Our destroyer and our cruiser, to their credit, are still alive. Somehow. I think that speaks more to the uh, ineptitude of the enemies on this side of the map than it does to the destroyer and the cruiser somehow surviving. Uh, but we take a shot at the Yama. We actually get a better hit on the Zao. Because, again, RNG. Gotta love it. Shoot at one ship, you hit the other one harder. It's weird. Now, if I would have targeted that ship, I would have missed. Just the way it works. But Zhao is making a huge mistake by turning towards me here. Again, I've got the shot out. It looks beautiful. Surely this will be the one that the Zhao regrets. I mean, he probably regrets it, but again, six overpins. These are plunging fire hits from this range. How the f*** am I overpinning a Zhao? Remember, Zhao's coated in 30 millimeters of armor. I don't overmatch it. Oh my god, that's a Montana. And a BA Montana. Uh, okay, that could have been worse. Now, we are not visible right now. But now we are. So, inevitably, when you go ahead and fire your guns, you just go ahead and give up the broadside of your ship and wait to be punished for it. Right? Glad we agree on something, RNG. <laughs> <laughs> if only if only the enemy were so unlucky but it is funny how every time every time I give up the broadside of my ship I don't get the benefit of the doubt <laughs> but every time the enemy does it's oh it's just overpins it's five six K it's fine it's fine I'm not angry you're angry but notice that everybody came this way I'm not staying here and fighting off the couple of ships here and watching for us to get flanked. I gotta go back, try to counter-rotate. You've seen me do this many a times. When the friendlies all try to group up in one area of the map, I counter-rotate. Because somebody's gotta stop the bullshit. Period. That's just the way it is. Somebody has to stop the bullshit. Now, as I'm on my way back, I want you guys to pay attention to what happens. Alright? Now, we've talked about this many a times where... Your team is falling apart. You're trying to counter-rotate. You're trying to put yourself in a good position. But there is one destroyer that's left in this game. And I'm going to put myself in the perfect position to be in a position where he can attack. And that's unfortunate. Because I should have known better. Because the last known position of the destroyer is clearly visible on the minimap. And he was on that left flank. Maybe that's a reason why everybody ran away from it. But either way, I'm trying to counter-rotate to stop the enemy's advance so that these guys can potentially hold on to make something happen. And that's when everything goes horribly wrong. Now, I do miss some opportunities, not gonna lie. We, we miss some opportunities to shoot things because we're trying not to get spotted while we're coming back across the map because I don't want the enemy to know that I'm here. Right? I want them to be surprised. The element of surprise, folks, never underestimate how well it can do for you. Anytime you get the chance to get the drop on the enemy, you should take it. Because the damage that you give will be almost certainly more than the, the damage you will receive. Now, I fire my guns here and I get spotted and I'm thinking, well, it could have been the guys behind me. Or... It could be that there's a destroyer in the near future, and you're in trouble. You guys take a guess as to which it... Oh my god. Hello, Ray Public. Come on, Montana. Okay, it could have been much worse. We're fine. We're fine. Now remember, there's a Louisiana over here too. We know about... Now this guy starts to make a turn, and then he kind of hesitates. So I'm like, well, we'll take the shot at his superstructure and his gun. See if we can get something here. And we do get a really nasty hit on him. Surprisingly good hit, considering that shot looked like it hit his gun. Um, or near his gun. Didn't look like it hit the superstructure at all. But uh, he gets a shot at me, he gets two overpins, and again, I'm feeling pretty good about this engagement so far. We're also angled away pretty sharply for the Louisiana, who just took a shot at me. And Louisiana gets a pretty solid hit on us for about 7k. But between the two of these guys, I am now in a position where both of them can shoot me. And unfortunately, I seem to be the only one really consistently getting any damage here because Napoli is shooting HE, uh, or somebody's shooting HE at the Ray Napoli clearly just fired AP at the Louisiana, 
But uh, we get a shot into the uh, upper side plating, and that's the one where they ended up shattering on the belt as he angles away. Napoli drops a smoke screen. Louisiana takes a bad shot at me, doesn't get much of anything. Now we know he's angled away, so we're going to aim even higher, trying to get those shots again up through that upper side plating and the superstructure. And you can see the plunging fire coming down, and that was a much better result. When you know they're angled, and you know that you're going to hit the belt, aim higher. Avoid the belt, if at all possible. Now again, I'm still spotted. There's a smoke screen here. Those guys are on the other side of an island. Who could possibly be spotting me? Now, it could still be Louisiana because of the smoke fire and penalty, but clearly the torpedoes that just went across my my uh, right side say otherwise, right? Like, we already, we already know. And then Louisiana's planes do what Louisiana planes do, which is just absolutely crunch us. But uh, our battleship buddy that came across, and oh my god, yep, there's the Shimakaze torpedoes. We knew he was, there was a third set. We dodge those, and then we, we get shot, but luckily, they didn't do any damage. Or very little damage. But uh, we have an island here that I thought I was pretty much safe behind at this point, so Louisiana shouldn't be able to lob that island. And now, I'm in a position where I have no way to counter the Shima. Right? There's nothing I can do here. We know he just fired, so it's time for us to get into a kiting position away from the Shimakaze. I have no way to see him. I can't shoot him. It's the way it is. I don't have the hit points to continue to chase him while there are two battleships over there ready to shoot me. One of them has run away with very little hit points. The other one is standing and fighting, and he has the ability to drop planes. Now, we're at 140,000 damage. We have done everything we can to try to stop the enemy's advance. The enemy has still gotten into the cap and are in a good position to hold the cap. The only one that can possibly shoot it is me. Now, this Louisiana has it in for me. I can't imagine why. It's just the way it is. But uh, there are battleships that are broadside to him. There's a cruiser out here that's that's like waiting to be shot at. He doesn't shoot at any of those. He goes for me. Chocker. But uh, maybe he considers me the bigger threat. But you can see his accuracy was pretty good on that one. Fortunately, I got turned away and it wasn't a problem. But then, of course, it is Louisiana and he does have four torpedoes. And he lands every one of them. At 5,000 damage a pop. That hurts. And that is the danger of these super cruisers, or super carriers, or hyper, hybrid carriers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, no matter what I do to stop them from doing damage with their guns, like, I can't dodge both their guns and their, their planes at the same time. And then he gets a shot on me and hits me for 5,000 with one, one shell hit. Uh, but again, he has the spotting and I don't, right? Fortunately, the Shima has left us alone for the moment as we've kited away, and that has broken contact. Now, the battleship did go down, unfortunately, and we still have the Napoli over here. The right side has been holding as best they can on that far right side, and you can see I'm checking health right now. I'm like, okay, well, I'm in a kiting position. If I can hold, maybe we can still win this. Napoli is starting to go forward, and I am trying to make sure that I don't die here, but their destroyer gets close enough to spot me again. That gives the uh, Louisiana the, the shot first. So now we've got to try to angle away before the shells get here, and he lands almost every one of them. But so do we. And we slap him for a pretty solid 12,000 damage. We're also going to have a faster reload than he does, so we're going to get another shot before he does, and he's not going to go dark before that happens. So we're going to go ahead and take that shot. Now look at my fucking Napoli. He's like, I must launch torpedoes. I'm sure going broadside in front of a battleship will be just fine and dandy. But also, the torpedoes are on the way for the Napoli. And out goes our Carnot as well. Fun is being had. Now we get our high caliber by hitting once again, aiming high. Ended up shattering a couple of shells there. One, one shattered a couple of ricochets off of the armored deck of the Louisiana. So we want to aim further to the left here to try to avoid hitting the deck if at all possible. Unfortunately, Napoli manages to kill our Yama. And then, of course, the, uh, the Napoli on our team is getting absolutely brutalized by the Louisiana because he's point fucking blank. Because he simply had to get his torpedoes away. And now he's dead by the BA Montana. The same BA Montana that was there at the beginning of the match that we were shooting at and blapped us for half our hit points. Now, you may have noticed 
we are suddenly the only one left because our entire team disappeared faster than uh, shoppers after their credit card is declined on Black Friday. Like, it's just how it works. But uh, we go ahead and take another shot. We know this game's over, so I don't really care at this point. Just take another shot into the superstructure area, and of course we leave him with just enough to get away. And it's only a matter of time before either his torps find me or somebody's guns do. But we are about to get one more shot off. You can see he gets his reload off. Are my guns gonna get there in time? Can we dodge the torpedoes? Unfortunately, he gets us, and our shells end up doing no damage that time. Sadness. But, 196,000 damage game. Not a bad first game in the Montana. The new Montana. 1,836 base XP. We did what we could to try to give our team a chance, but, you know, there's some times that you just got no chance. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you enjoying the new ships? And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.